Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today we're back on the 8.10 test server um, looking at the new Russian medium tank, the Object 430. We'll have a quick look at it in the tech tree. The T54 still leads up to the T62A and the Object 140. You can also still unlock the T54 from the Object 416, but this tank here now also leads up to the new tier 9 tank for Object 430 version 2 which itself leads up to the new tier 10 Russian medium for object 430. So now Russia has got three tier 10 medium tanks and uh, that makes Russia to the country with the most tier 10 medium tanks in the game at the moment. It's kind of strange that the second version comes before the first version of a tank that's kind of weird but never mind anyway a lot of people are getting their willies up because of this tank are getting really pissed off with wargaming because they say it makes the other two russian medium tanks that won the game before this one obsolete and uh, just basically kills the gameplay for them because they say this tank is that much better so in the course of this review we will be comparing the object 430 to the t62a and the object 140 and we'll have a look at why people say this and then i'll be giving you my opinion whether i think this tank is actually overpowered or so much better than the object 140 and the t62a basically this tank is very very similar to the two other tanks there are some differences some significant differences actually it's not quite as similar as for example the object 140 is to the t62a but there are still a lot of similarities and the gameplay still is very similar with all of these three tanks so that's why you can compare them very easily we've got 1,900 hit points on our object 430. That is exactly the same as of object 140, but T62A gets 50 hit points more. That's just a negligible difference, doesn't really matter. This tank is the lightest out of the three, weighing in at only 35.75 tons with my loadout. The object 140 is heavier, and also the T62A. You shouldn't ram tanks with any of these vehicles just because they are pretty light and they are not heavy tanks they are medium tanks they all share exactly the same engine uh, 580 horsepower engine that means that the object 430 gets the best power to weight ratio out of the three now the object 140 already had a slightly improved power to weight ratio over the t62a but this tank gets an even better power to weight ratio it's not much better but a little bit and it can make a little bit of a difference the speed limit is exactly the same as on the object 140 55 kilometers an hour and five kilometers faster than on the t62a and the improved party weight ratio will mean that you will be easily able to reach this top speed the traverse speed is the worst out of a bunch with 52 degrees per second that um, compares to the 54 degrees in the object 140 and the 56 degrees which is excellent on the T62A. Also the turret traverse speed is pretty sluggish but it's exactly the same as on the object 140. It's a lot worse than on the T62A. Now I was saying it's sluggish, it's not really sluggish, it's still pretty decent but it's just not as fast as the t62a which can be a bit of a drawback in a close quarters brawl but yeah it's still pretty decent the armor is basically the thing about this tank that makes it special and stand out from the other two russian medium tanks because the other two have both got w about 100 millimeters of frontal hull armor whereas this tank gets 120 millimeters that's a significant increase if you've ever driven an object 140 or t62a or played against one of these two tanks you will know that basically any tier 10 tank in the game and nearly all tier 9 tanks can easily penetrate your upper glacis if you don't angle it it's not as easy with the object 430 you can get a good amount of bounces from this upper glacius here especially if you angle it about like this i'd say this upper glacius is very very bouncy we'll just quickly compare the angling to the angling on the object 140 i'd say it's about the same maybe a bit maybe the angle is a bit steeper i'd say the angle is actually no, I'd say it's the same or a bit steeper on the Object 140, but I'm not quite sure. Then the T60 obviously gets a lot less angled surface on the upper glaciers than the Object 430. So 
basically, with, with this amazing angling and the amazing 120mm of armor, that means that this upper glacis is very, very bouncy. Also, you can see that there are kind of these little cheeks here, which I better auto bounce zones. I couldn't try it out yet, but I am pretty positive that they are. So, the upper glacis is pretty strong and the lower glacis is really really small we can see that the other two tanks both have got bigger lower glaciers it's got this weak spot here the driver's hatch or the driver's viewport it's not big but i guess it makes penetrating a lot easier also um if we move on to the turret we can see that the turret has also got stronger armor than the other two tanks 248 it's not much and at these numbers here, with this amount of angling, it doesn't really make all that much difference. But, you know, it's still there and it's better. The side armor of the hull is 5mm better than on the T62A, but exactly the same as on the Object 140. That means that it will give you a little more freedom when trying to angle this tank. As I already said, I'd angle it kind of like this. And the rear of the hull is only 40mm, which is actually quite a bit less than on the T62A and the Object 140. If we compare the sides of the turret, we've got 185 on um, this tank, which compares really well to the 187 on the Object 140, but it's quite a bit more than the 161 on the T62A. A, and the rear armor is um, really really bad but it's nearly exactly the same as on the T62A and the Object 140 so it hasn't got a big drawback there. Now one interesting thing on this tank is that it's got two cupolas up here which are quite significant weak spots. If we compare that to the T62A it has only got one so that's quite a difference. However the Object 140 has got two as well but they are more prominent than on this tank. Generally this tank has got the lowest profile and it's the smallest vehicle out of the three. If we pull up the T62A this is definitely the biggest with the Object 140 being slightly more compact and then the Object 430 being really really sleek and slim and small. So um, this tank's definitely got amazing camo values and it can be quite difficult to hit. This turret obviously allows you to go hold down really well, but the gun depression on this tank is quite lacking. I would say that it's better than the T62A's gun depression, but not by a lot, and the Object 140's gun depression is definitely better. So yeah, that's definitely a drawback on this tank. Next, we're going to compare the guns of these three tanks and separate. They've both got exactly the same gun, really the um, 100mm U8TS, but they have got slightly different stats on all of these tanks, so we'll start with the T62A. On the T62A, this gun has got a rate of fire of 9.09. .09. On the Object 140, it's, that drops to 8.7. That's quite a significant decrease, actually, which will mean that it cuts into your DPM quite a lot. And then on the Object 140, we've got the 9.09 .09 again. That, for me, is the biggest disadvantage of this tank, that the DPM is a lot less than on the other two tanks. We'll quickly compare it. It's got 2,783, whereas the others have got 2,909. So that that's nearly... 200 or more like 150 damage per minute less and that can make quite a difference actually also the reduced rate of fire gives you less flexibility for example the t62a could get two shots in into an enemy tank whereas this object 430 would only get one shot into it in certain situations if we compare the guns further we can see they've, they've all got exactly the same penetration and damage values because it's basically exactly the same gun however the T62A, if we look at it, gets 0.34 accuracy in 2 seconds aiming time. The attributes of the Object 140's gun bled off a bit here, with only having 0.35 accuracy and 2.1 uh, seconds aiming time, which is a very slight decrease, but it's still there. But if we compare that now to the Object 430's gun, we can see it's still got the 0.35 accuracy, but now it's got 2.3 seconds aiming time. And this significantly increased aiming time makes quite a big difference, I think. The increased aiming time and the decreased DPM are the two main things you dislike about this tank for me personally. Then, the last few stats that we've got left, the view range is exactly the same on all of the three tanks, but the Object 140 and the 
uh, for object 140 and for object 430 have got slightly decreased signal range compared to the T62A superior 850 meters signal range, but 730 is only slightly below average and still absolutely acceptable. All in all, out of the three, personally, I would probably still prefer the object 140 because it's still got quite a bit more gun depression and because it's got that better DPM and aiming time, which means a lot to me, especially aiming time in medium tanks is really, really important. And I've played both of these tanks and I just seem to do a lot better in the Object 140 than in the Object 430. I'll just all the same quickly review the crew skills and equipment setup that I would go with for you guys. Uh, I definitely put a um, vertical stabilizer onto this tank because of the bad aiming time and because you'll usually find yourself in close quarters brawling situations. Also you want to have the medium caliber tank on rammer to make up for your slightly decreased um, reload time. And then the vents. You could also swap the vents for coated optics or the toolbox but I went with vents because I like vents and I just feel that you need 5% to your crew skills. Talking of crew skills, I would personally go with repairs for your entire crew, swap it for 6 cents once your commander reaches 100%. You want to have snapshot and smooth ride on gunner and driver and later on probably also off-road driving and then um, safe storage for your loader. So all that said, um, let's head out to the battlefield and see how this tank performs out there. So, the first game for today is on El Halouf. This map has been changed slightly, or not actually slightly, quite a lot, uh, because there's this hill down here, I will show you in a second. Now, if this is typical test of the matchmaking, nearly the entire game consists of tier 10 tanks, and most of them are tank destroyers. Um, before we head into the middle of the fight, I just want to quickly point one thing out, and that is that the performance of this tank might not be 100% reliable on the test server, because there's a lot of gold flying around, and uh, the one of the main uh, pros of this tank, its great armor, might be negated by the premium rounds, and that's why it might perform worse than it would do on the live server, I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, right here, you can see this hill here. I've headed right down to it. It's just situated in the middle of the valley. Um, a bat chat appears. Now, I I do not really like it. I think it's good for the gameplay, but it's kind of unrealistic, I think. Okay, I'm not one of these freaks who goes uh, around the place moaning about uh, you know, realism and World of Tanks and so on, but it just doesn't seem right that this hill is in the middle of the valley. But still, it definitely adds to the gameplay. It gives medium tanks like me a uh, lot more opportunities. Uh, I kind of dunked my shot there. That was a really poor shot. The bat shot slices through my arm. We'll just have a look where that went through in a second. Um, yeah, through my upper glaciers. He's probably firing uh, heat rounds, but I can't be entirely sure. Mm, I get shot by a weapon trigger, so I have to retreat really quickly because if that guy's got the 128 millimeter gun, then he will be able to put a sh second shot into me within a few seconds. And we get another shot into the bat shot. You can see the reload time still is pretty decent on this tank, but it's just not as good as on the other Russian medium tanks. Um, by the way, this tank has got the worst alpha damage along with the other tier 10 medium tanks of any of the. Um, tier 10 tanks it's got for 320 damage only um, and that combined with the slower rate of fire it's not slow but it's slower than other the Russian tanks means that this tank uh, sometimes can have problems putting out the equal amount of damage as other tier 10 mediums maybe do like for example the new STV-1 or something See, ah, oh, you fire clutch on the move, so I wasn't expecting that. And the bat shot is aiming at me, I have to really take this. Ah, oh, that was so lucky, I had to take that shot clutch. Uh, that was really lucky, the Wolf Tank squad was generous with me there. But now, um, yeah, what I was about to say was that um, I haven't had any actual really good games in this tank. I've played quite a few this morning. Uh, I've had a few alright games, this was one of them. Uh, the second one also, but I never felt that I really 
that this tank really did as well as it could or but I was playing it to its full potential whereas um, just a few minutes ago I just jumped into one random game with my object one fourth and straight away it was absolutely successful and amazing and that's why I still just prefer the object 140 but that just might be because I cannot play this tank to its full potential and it's just not my kind of vehicle but I don't really understand that because it's not that much different from the object 140 for example um, so I'm really trying to get the kill on that WZ but I just can't reach him so I'm going to go for this 121 aim at engine deck hoping to set him on fire but it doesn't work uh, I lead my shot there and take a second one above average damage roll slightly there um, but then the 121 disappears from my radar and our tanks are dying left, right and centre here so it's not looking good for us at all and um, I'm lucky that the cap's broken because I was just considering driving over there myself now that's a bit of a funny uh, glitch up there the <laughs> Yak Panzer U100 just sitting in the middle of nothing in the air but you know it's the test server. You can't complain. Oh, I drift. Cool. So now I haven't. There haven't been any enemies spotted up that ridge yet. But there's so many tank destroyers in the enemy team. But I think it's pretty likely that there's one tank destroyer at least waiting up there for me. Might be a Waffentrager Alpha U100 as one was shooting at me earlier. But I think that Waffentrager's um oh, further over there. Now it fighting vehicle T15B183 spotted with a very dangerous gun he would only have to splash on me and I would be dead with my 430 uh, or 420 health remaining now there's a E100 aiming at me there's a good chance that that guy wouldn't penetrate if he was firing APC um, not APC I mean AP ammo at me because it's got pretty weedy penetration but uh, there's a good chance that he's firing premium shells so I'm not taking any chances here yeah, there's the Waffen Trigger LV100 that hit me earlier. Um, or actually, there are two of them. Oh. Those tanks are a real pest on the Tetris server. They're just. Oh, they're so annoying, you know. You just get out of cover and they kill you within two seconds. Okay, so I managed to get along here without getting shot at. But now the fighting vehicle's attention turns towards me. I get one shot in very clutch and manage to get into cover just before he gets to pull the trigger, which is lucky again. Um, you can see I slow down quite a bit while traversing the slope here, but that's obvious. Uh, so now I have to hope that the E100 isn't just over here waiting for me to turn around the corner because I have definitely been spotted. And there he is. Okay, I fire one absolutely clutch that goes nowhere near the E100 because I was already on the retreat. And here you see where the bad gun depression comes into play. Uh, if I was in, for example, Object 140 or the new Japanese tank, I would have been able to handle the situation a lot more easy. Uh, now, oh, this is really unlucky. Uh, he rams me so that my sides turn towards him and kills me then eventually. Um, in retrospect, what I probably should have done is not retreated behind this rock here, but I should have driven out, continued driving and... Um, track the I should have tracked the E100 with my first shot and then started circling him and carouseling him and um, that way I could have probably killed him even however maybe he would have backed off against the rock or one of the weapon triggers would have come and um, rescued the E100 but still that would have probably been the right thing to do in retrospect but you know in the heat of the combat I just I just my brain was just not working that minute so uh, yeah, that was a real shame, but still, I hope that kind of showcased uh, for Object 430 for you, and if it didn't, I've still got a second game lined up for you guys, so stay tuned. So, next we spawn on Sacred Valley, um, and yeah, I first of all intended to head over to the encounter base, but then I reconsidered and started heading up here, that's why I'm a bit behind everyone else. Uh, our enemies are going for an early cap, but that probably won't work because we've got lots of tank destroyers over there and heavy tanks that will probably be able to break it. Um, yeah, there's an IS-7, an FE-4202, and let's see who else, an E-50M up there. So we should be alright on this flank. Let's see if there's somebody else heading up here. Uh, T-57 Heavy, he's always useful to have. So, looking good.
and the Caps proceeded quite far actually, I didn't expect it to um, expect them to be able to cap that long. So the FP402 and me are going up for this aggressive position here uh, and fighting vehicle 215B183 and uh, 215B are spotted up there in front of us. I get one shot in and go into cover but the FP402 doesn't quite manage and gets absolutely obliterated. I put a blind shot in at that FE 215B, it obviously misses. Now he gets one shot into me. Let's quickly pause it here. We'll turn around. Okay, where did that shot penetrate? Um, let's see, oops. Where what what what's going on? Okay, something's really weird. Um Okay. Here we go. Where did that shot? See it went, can't, I can't really zoom in, something's wrong with the replay file, but can you see where it went in just next to the gun mantlet, or actually in the gun mantlet, it went through and damaged. He must be firing um, heat shells or APCR shells, otherwise he couldn't penetrate there. That's a 250mm armor zone, at that angle no way, he's definitely using high explosive anti-tank. Well, I'm not quite sure what the premium ammo on that tank is. Uh, it might be Hesh? No, I'm, I'm not sure. Please let me know in the comments if you know. Uh, or I can just look it up in a second. But uh, anyway, that was... He's de we have to watch out for him because he's definitely firing premium ammo. The second shot goes in too and that must have hit my... Let's see, where did that shot go in? First of all, we try to make one shot happen and it actually goes in. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick look where second shot penetrated. Um, let's see. Can't really see. Okay. We'll just carry on then. Oh, there's a Waffen Traeger of E100 spotted up ahead. Uh, I aim for a superstructure. Uh, first shot misses because I was firing kind of clutch. Uh, I retreat a bit to kind of get hold down here. The second shot doesn't miss because he was just at an awkward angle behind that rock or ridge. Um, third shot in. Now you see me reloading AT shells. I'm going to take one or two last shots at this last long position and then I'm just going to stop firing. Yep, now you see me relocating here. A bat chat going in, he might... Uh, yep, there's a T-57 Heavy and a Fosh. Okay, I track the Fosh um, and next I go for the T-57. Now let's see coming... Ah, the Fosh disappears from my radar, it's a shame. Um, that T-57 Heavy is quite alone up there and really I shouldn't have spent that much time staying here and sniping. Uh, in retrospect I probably should have quickly rushed around the flank to where the bat shot is now and uh, helped that T-57 by attacking those two heavies from the rear. Uh, but now I see that the bat shot managed to flank around. I was hoping that the two of them between them uh, might manage to take out those heavy tanks but obviously they don't so uh, I have to quickly rush in. I can one shot that 113 and 215 B now as well. So uh, let's see if we can make it happen. I'm ignoring the tank destroyers on my right side and just trying to help out that T57 heavy. So we've got the jump on them and can we? Oh, we bounce. I can't believe that shot didn't go in. I can't believe it. Okay, can we take up? Here you see the bad gun depression again. So first of all, I'm going to go for the easier kill, the 215 B. And then the T-57 Heavy takes out the 113. So we got the kills between the two of us and um, managed to secure this corner here. Um, yeah, the enemy have won the battle for the cap circle, really. So right now I'm thinking about rushing in and breaking the cap soon. First of all, I have to deal with this battle trigger, though. You see me loading HE shells again. Um... I think he's going for the T-57 and that's really great, with AT shells we can get this 440 damage roll which is just great. Um, however the Waffen Trigger takes out my friend, um, we've only got two AT shells left but one last um, shell should be able to seal that Waffen Trigger's fate. So I try to relocate um, to a position where he won't expect me to get the jump on him when he pokes from this corner. But something very unexpected happens. The Fosh 1.5 is pushed up and um, 
is now progressing to my location, so I I cannot encounter this tank front on. He's got nearly 300mm of penetration with standard ammo. He will easily be able to kill me. The weapon tree gets one shot in me, a second shot miss, and I can take him out with my HE shell in the last moment, just before he could pull the trigger a third time on me. Um, uh, I, I, I should have probably trapped the first shot, but I'm lucky he misses a shot. And I bounced off the spot, was really unlucky. I hit his uh, upper glacius instead of the side where I was aiming. You can see where the shot bounced. And he gets a shot into me. So, yeah, I die. That was a shame, but we picked up two frags and uh, helped out a T57 Heavy eventually. Also taking out the Waffen Trig of E100. But we obviously end up losing this game as the E50M can't win it on its own, probably. So, um, anyway, I hope that kind of. Yeah, showed you the strengths of object 100, uh, 430. Um, I must say that in this game, probably if it had been on the live server, I would have survived longer because, for example, the shots from the FE 215, we wouldn't have been able to penetrate as he wouldn't have been firing premium ammo at me. So that was quite a shame. But um, anyway. I still hope the games were enjoyable for you and for a conclusion and a summary that's head back to the garage. All in all, I must say I like this tank. I don't like it quite as much as the Object 140, but I still think it's a very good tank and the additional armor definitely adds to the gameplay in this tank. Maybe I like the Object 140 more because this I tested this tank out on the test server and uh, just because of the premium ammo penetrating this tank. On the live server it might perform a lot better than here on the test server but still I think this is a really good vehicle and uh, might be the replacement for the other two Russian medium tanks and uh, probably the new favour of the month once it comes out of the live server. I could imagine that for a few weeks or months when, once it comes out uh, people will get very frustrated when fighting against this tank just because they will think it's just another of these Russian medium tanks with weak hull armour and just fire at its upper glaciers and bounce right off. It might be a bit like the super purging but after a few months people learn how to deal with this tank and gets killed over time. However it hasn't got as obvious weak spots as for example a super purging so I think probably this tank would be very enjoyable to play on the live server. It might even be the best out of the three tanks. For me personally, still the Object 140 is my favourite and number one. But I can absolutely understand you if you say the Object 430 is the tank for me just because it's got that little bit more armour or it's actually quite a lot more armour and that adds a bit more flexibility and brawling ability to this tank. So uh, yeah, as I said, all in all, a great machine. I must say I really like it, although maybe not quite as much as the Object 140. And I hope I can give you a good first overview of it, some good first impressions. I'll definitely take a look at this tank. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'll be making a full review of it or just uh, like a short video. But it's kind of looking pretty interesting, uh, comparing it to the T-54. And of course, also watch out for the reviews of the Chinese tanks coming up. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, consider liking it or subbing to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I hope I see you in one of my next videos. And bye-bye.